Hey, thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to do an art journal page using these beautiful paper dolls from an Etsy store. They're so adorable. They flip, Their dresses flip up and you can see their cute little bloomers underneath. And they're movable paper dolls, so their skirts move and they're just super cute. They do can can dance. So um, hopefully you'll stay tuned and watch me create this and see what I've done to decorate these paper dolls and add them to this art journal page. I'm working on a new collaboration with an Etsy shop called Ooh Sparkles Dollhouse. Is that a cute name or what? And the owner of the shop, her name is Monica. She has given a discount code uh, the code is 20 sparkles. I'll also put it in the description box below for a discount for her paper doll kits. Look at these adorable Can Can Girls. So they're very layered. There's three different ones in the kit. There's La Franche. Look at her. Oh, so cute. These are going to be so much fun to create. And of course, they got my head spinning. I've got some great ideas for decorating these and for using them in my art journal because I've got an art journal page idea. And this comes with it too. This is a backdrop for your Can Can Girls. So you can create these just as regular paper dolls to just play with and move them and position them. You could put a hanger on the top of their head, you know, with some, some ribbon or embroidery floss and hang them up. Um, you and, But I'm going to show how to use them on an art journal page because as you guys know, that's what I love to do is create backgrounds, create art journal pages, decorate paper dolls that are movable and add them to my journals. So let's get started and have some fun. So the first thing I've done is to print out these paper dolls onto some heavyweight cardstock. It's ultra smooth. It's by a company called Accent. It's opaque white, eight and a half by 11 cardstock that is 120 pound. So it is very, very thick. I won't have to back these with cardboard like I do with some of my other paper dolls that I've shown. If you print them right onto good heavy cardstock that is 120 pound or heavier, you're gonna be able to create these dolls just on their own with cutting them out and assembling them and decorating them. So that's what I've done is uh, use that cardstock, 120 pound and printed. And now I'm gonna go ahead and fussy cut out all these images. There will be a link in the description box below of the cardstock that I like to use. The creator of these designs uh, did a really good job of marking everything for right thigh, left thigh, torso, front image, back image, reverse image, legs, pelvis. So the, they're really well marked. And then there's also a sheet that comes with it that shows you um, how to assemble the doll. So it's really good information. And on this top piece, if you can see, she has cut out as one image. So it's the top skirt and the arms, but you would just trim around this and you would leave it all one solid piece okay so i'm not going to cut the arms out separate they're going to stay attached to this top skirt as her directions indicate Just to give some quick fussy cutting tips um it's best if i i like to take my long long sheer scissors and cut these images apart so that i can work on a smaller piece because when you fussy cut it's best to turn the paper and not your scissors. So if you're trying to cut and you're trying to go around this and you're turning your scissors and you're holding the card straight, it's hard on your wrist and you don't get as good of an image as if you just keep your scissors straight and just turn the paper. So you're just using your tips, making really small cuts and turning as you go and you'll get a really, really nice fussy cut. So if you cut them into smaller little pieces like this, they're more manageable than trying to do that with a big piece and turning a great big piece. So I cut them out in small sections and then I turn the paper as I cut, keeping my scissors straight. And then with things like this where she indicated right thigh, left thigh, what you can do is once you've cut it small like this, is to take your pencil, turn this over and write on this that this is right and this is left. If you hold it up, you can see through it. And right and left, so when you cut it out, 
if you forget, you'll know that that's the left one, that's the right one. And you can always refer back to your picture because when you download a digital image like this, you can always open it and look at it and you'll be able to see that obviously the, um, the right and the left, the right one is going to have um, a bow on this side and the left one's going to have a bow on this side. I think you're going to mix them up. Just refer back to the, the image and the writing. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I have to always get rid of these white edges. I can't stand white edges. And I love Ecoline brush pens for that. Any brush pen will work though. Um, and for something like this, if it's black, you might as well use a black pen because you can obviously cover up that white and make it disappear and make that edge nice and crisp black. But for like the skirt part, I don't want to do that in black because see how it's red and it's not outlined? So I'm going to use red. So I'm going to just take a red one and go through and do the same thing and get rid of that white line all along that edge in red. And it bumps up the color and gets rid of the white edge. So use whatever color the card indicates along the edge and along limbs you can use a flesh type color a skin tone type color this is sepia light or if it's outlined like this is outlined in black you could do black along those edges that's just personal preference doing that tip of getting rid of those white edges will just make your final piece look much better okay so i have an idea now for decorating this obviously the first thing we see is lace and you could take some lace, some in, lace in black, you know, not too wide. You could um, gather it and sew it right to your card or glue it to this card and have gathered lace right there, which would be the most obvious. Um, but because I'm going to put this in an art journal, lace is going to be a little bit thick in my book. And my book is already kind of thick and gaitered because I use a lot of dimensional things. So I want to use tissue paper. And I have an idea for making gathered tissue paper to put along these edges instead of using lace. Now, if I were going to put this together and hang it up in my art room just for something pretty, I would definitely use gathered lace. But let's try something different this so time. I'm going to use regular tissue paper. This is like wrapping paper tissue paper. And if I were to take a needle and thread and try to gather this, of course, this paper would rip apart. So I'm going to take some thin cotton material. This is just regular thin, very thin cotton material that's for crafting and sewing. And I'm going to cut a very thin strip and tear it. And you end up with a nice thin piece like this. Now what I'm going to do is just to take my art glitter glue and make a line across my tissue paper. And we're gonna trim this so it doesn't matter that it's uneven piece. You can even recycle pieces that came out of packages and gifts. It can be crumpled and wrinkled, that's okay. That just adds to the beauty of it. So I'm gonna put my little line of art glitter glue just like that. And then I'm gonna take this piece and I'm going to lay it across that line of glue. So I'm going to just lay it in place across this. And try to flatten it out a little bit because, of course, you know, it's going to be unflat and you want to get it as flat as you can. But just simple gluing it across the tissue paper like this. And then I'm going to let that completely dry. So now I'm going to take a regular small needle, a fine one, and I'm using bead thread that's white, but you can use regular thread. That would be fine. I just had this at hand. And you want to measure out a piece that is as long as your uh, tissue piece. And you're going to put a knot in the end. So go ahead and knot the end. And then thread your needle. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do 
is to go to the end here and we're going to just put the needle in straight down and we're going to carefully go back and forth being sure you're going all the way through the paper but you're going through that material that you've glued on so you're just going up and down up and down taking little stitches like that and then you carefully pull your thread not too tight and then you start again always from the top and always on top of the material so you're just going to go through and up and through and up hopefully you can see that just taking little stitches going back and forth back and forth and every time you get an inch or so long you can carefully pull that thread through like that so you're going to do that all the way to the very end so i've gone all the way down my little piece here and now we want the gathers to be a little bit more gathered so you just have to kind of carefully hold the end of your string and work this along to start making your gathers and by putting that material on there your paper doesn't tear and you just have to be careful but look at these beautiful gathers in the paper and when you flip it over you have some beautiful look at how even that's gathered and it's just paper and you wouldn't know that that little piece of material is back there it's really pretty so gather it up the distance that you want and what you want to do is kind of measure this out you can measure it with a piece of string to see what size piece you're going to need how how long of a length figure that out and then that's the length that you want to make this gathered piece to put on your image so don't gather it up too much or make it too short because then it won't work for your project so you can come down here and start moving these gathers down at the other end too just sliding it down the string like this then gather it up a little more and slide it a little more you just have to be careful i mean it's paper let's face it but this does an awesome job of being able to gather evenly some tissue paper and then i want to see if this is going to fit on my image and i think it's just about right so i'm going to stop there and so what i'm going to do now is tie a bow tie a knot go through like you would on material and just tie a, a knot it doesn't have to be major it's just kind of to anchor it because again we're just going to be really careful with our paper and now we're going to have to trim this so what you want to do is kind of lightly pull these out so it's straight out and then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to trim this off however long you want your little ruffle to be I'm making it oh about a half inch on either side of the gather so I'm just taking my scissors and trimming don't cut your part that you've gathered just cut the paper off that's hanging off the end and save this because you could use this for another gather flip it over trim the other side they don't have to be straight because it's going to look lacy and that's what we want save that okay so now i've got my gathered piece look at how cute that is i love it and when you crunch it in half and pinch it along the middle part it's going to be so cute to glue this on and have this gathered paper along this edge look at how cute it looks awesome i love it now this white paper lace could be used on maybe this particular one but to do this one obviously you'd need black so i had a thought to try using my dilutions black marble ink spray 
And um, I, so I got out my box that I use for spring. This is a new one, but I use a little box, like a pizza box kind of thing, so I don't make a mess on my desk. And I'm just going to go ahead and spray this to change it to black. And then I'm going to let it dry. So that worked out really well. How fun is that? Now I have black ruffles. Pretty cool. So you could change those ruffles basically into any color you want using Dilutions ink spray. And then you just want to be sure you really let it dry because well. Because those paper lace are kind of delicate, I think those would be the very last thing that I would do. I would put together the doll and assemble the doll and then very last thing after you get it completed I would put those glue those paper lace pieces into place just so that you protect them because they are a little bit delicate but hey it turned out great and look what I've got is black ruffle to put around the edge of this isn't that isn't that cool that's super fun flatter alternative to using regular lace but you also could use regular lace on this and it'd be beautiful too There's a little dotted line on the little pelvis that you glue these in place onto. So you just kind of follow that and glue them into place. And then I'm going to make little um, silk ribbon bows to put where these bows are. I'm going to make some real bows and attach them. I like to use four millimeter pure silk ribbon that you use for ribbon embroidery to make my bows for my paper dolls because it makes such pretty little soft bows. So I just made a bow for each side and glued it into place. So this is ready to go. And now I'm going to do some decorating on her head before I put her together. I decided to make some silk roses on her little hat band by doing ribbon embroidery. And you use two millimeter silk ribbon to make the basic shape. And then you use seven millimeter to make the petals. And I didn't have any red, but silk ribbon dyes. So I can always go back in later with a pen and change the roses to red. I don't think I'm gonna try and squeeze five roses into her hat band like it is. So I think I'm gonna just do three. But what you do is just tie a little knot in your two millimeter silk ribbon and you make five little spokes kind of going around in a circle. So here are my little spokes that you use, you use to make the roses and there wasn't enough room down here to make another one so I'm gonna just see how it plays out and then you take wider silk ribbon and this is seven millimeter and you do the same thing where you tie a knot in the, in the end and you feed it through a darning needle and you come up in the middle, so you, I'm going to start down here at this end, and you come up in the middle of your little pattern, like that, and you pull it through to the knot, and then you start weaving back and forth in and out of these spokes. So you go over and under and over and under and around and around as many times as you can to create the rose. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. And there are some great videos on YouTube. In fact, I'll link one for how to make silk embroidered roses. Look at what adorable roses that made. You go around and around and it creates these beautiful silk roses. I love it. And what I'm going to do, I like them yellow actually. It's kind of cute, but there's nothing else yellow on her she, her theme is more red so i am going to take a red equal line brush pen and you can dye your ribbon just by brushing it that's the really cool thing about silk is it takes inks and paints and so you can color your silk roses pretty much to change them if you don't like i said i didn't have red they might even be pretty to be variegated. If I don't color them in solid, then I get some variegated roses. It makes them look even more rose-like. Look how pretty that looks. A little, leaving a little bit yellow and a little bit red. Look how pretty. 
gorgeous love it love it love it love it that's what i had in mind so that was a great idea to do silk ribbon embroidery roses and now on her um, necklace i'm going to go ahead and bead that with some little a uh, super small um uh, 0 015 seed beads and then down here i think i'm going to do black glitter on her outfit so let's go ahead and do the beading next i decided to bump up the color in those red roses a little bit more and these arteza brush pens the red uh, a 101 the arteza brush pens are great for this kind of thing too because they have a nice little fine point and you can get down in those little crevices and the ink that's in them, the water soluble ink will just sink down into that silk and it just made them a little bit more red. Pretty. I'm using these little tiny faceted black glass beads. They're actually antique beads and a very, very small size 12 bead needle and some black bead, uh, bead string. Okay, so I start by putting my double knot at the end. I thread my bead needle and what I like to do is to just go around the back side of the doll and put the knot on this side, put a little dot of art glitter glue. I've shown this in other videos, but in case this is the first one of mine that you're watching, I put a little dot of glue to just anchor that little piece of thread. And then I put a little piece of tape so scotch tape to hold it in place and that's just to anchor down that piece of thread and now I can feed the beads on to the string so let's see if these little tiny beads are gonna fit because they're pretty tiny they might be a little tricky to work with but I have wanted to find something to use these little antique beads on and this will be the prettiest little project for it yeah it works so yay this is gonna look great so I just feed the beads onto the thread and when I get enough to make that first loop the same as the picture I'm gonna just come across and wrap that thread around the back and do the same thing with gluing it and taping it into place and i'm going to make three strands just like she has on her neck here's how the beads look and i put a little bit of art glitter glue that's going to dry clear just to put them in to hold them into place so the beads look really cute so now i'm going to put some art glitter glue with a fine tip applicator all along this decorative pattern on her dress and use some very pretty black sparkly glitter to glitter that part of her outfit. I carefully applied art glitter glue all around that pattern and tried to be as neat as possible so it wouldn't look junky and now I'm going to add my little glitter to the top. Add the glitter. it off and look how pretty that's going to be gorgeous i'm going to leave that little dusting on there until this whole thing dries and then i can um, brush that off with a little paintbrush but look how pretty so now that's black glittered and then the beads and then the silk flowers up at the top so she looks pretty cute so now i can put these while the top is drying i can put these pieces together and with this top can can skirt what you want to do is Make a little fold right here where the hands are on the skirt. Just a little bit of a fold on both sides like that. Just a little bend and then straighten it back out. And the legs are going to get put onto the body. I'm going to use a paper piercer and a small brad to just put those into place. Put a hole through both and connect them with their brad and i'm using mini size brads that you can get for card making and then this goes on the back this piece goes on the back 
the body goes on the top and you can see the little dots to line up so you just paper pierce those each one and the top one and she her body goes her little torso goes underneath or on top and this goes like this and then her body is going to go on top here and then you can put them together with brads so here it is all put together and now I'm going to take some art glitter glue and glue her arms to her shoulders I'm going to just put a little glue behind there and glue that into place and same with the other side How adorable is this look at this cute girl her legs move and bend they also move this way and you can move them like this and bend it super cute and where this bends it lifts up and it shows her little bloomers and bows underneath so cute. Now the last part of this is going to be to add this paper embellishment that I created. I'm going to put that on her top skirt like that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that into place. So she's all decorated. Look at that cute, cute paper lace that I created out of tissue paper and her embellishments are adorable she looks really great i love her she turned out so cute and then this lifts up and shows her little bloomers underneath cute so now on to decorating a second one that is going to go into my large ranger dilutions art journal and as you can see she fits just perfectly on the page so i'm only going to have room for two so i'm going to just choose one of the other can can girls to create I decided to go ahead and use this one as the second one so i'm going to go ahead and fussy cut out all the pieces now it's time to decorate this one so what i'm going to do i took a tombow mono drawing pen and i added some extra let's see if i can get this to focus some extra eyelashes and a little darker around her eyes i glued on a little gem there and there just to add some bling and I'm going to use these little feathers these little white feathers were sent to me in happy mail by Mimi so thank you Mimi these are perfect to be feathers in her cap so to put those on I'm going to just take a paper piercer and poke a hole at the top where they go into her headband and put the little ends of the feathers into the hole through to the back and glue and tape them on the back so I'm going to do that then I'm going to take some art glitter glue and I'm going to add this sparky, sparkly gold glitter to her headband and around her outfit here where it's gold. I also use my black pen to draw in some hairlines. See how I put in some curls and just some little details in her hair just for fun. On the boots, I'm going to take my little bead needle and thread the black bead thread and I'm going to just thread around and lace up those boots with some string i'm going to add gold glitter with my art glitter glue i'm going to add gold glitter to this part of her outfit that has gold and then i have another cute idea for making the ruffle on this skirt so i'll show you that part last i've laced up the shoes with some uh, black thread and a needle and put in the brads. I used my paper piercer to poke my holes and put my brads in and I glued the legs, upper legs to the torso. So this is ready to go. She's got glitter around her dress and on her head and her feathers. It looks so cute. I love those feathers. They're adorable. And then there's gold on this. So this is ready to go and they get layered with the big piece at the bottom and then the torso which I've poked the holes in where the pattern indicates and then this goes on here and then this goes on the top and then you put a brad through 
through all four pieces. Now I'm going to take my art glitter glue to glue the upper arms behind her shoulders. Just putting a little dot and pressing it down, making sure it's nice and flat. So her legs move this way and they can kick out like this so you can kick the legs out. This moves and then you want to put that little bend just below the hand. So I kind of just put my thumb there, held it down and made my little bend so that you can bend it up and see her little petticoats. And now what I want to do for this top layer here for adding some um, instead of putting in gathered lace or doing the same thing I did with tissue paper I have another idea for that. So for the ruffles on this one I'm using Kleenex art glitter glue and a paintbrush. So what you want to do is just take and tear a piece of Kleenex not too big not too small just a little piece and then you're gonna put your end of your paintbrush in push down and gather around it just like this and then you're going to put art glitter glue either on the Kleenex you can do it either way you can put a dab on the Kleenex or you can put it right on your pattern and then you're just going to press down hold it in place for just a little bit because art glitter glue grabs pretty quick and then carefully remove your paintbrush and I'm going to fill this whole area with those and then afterwards I'm going to trim them. So let's do another one. Take your Kleenex, take your thumb and your fingers and just pinch and pull a piece like this. Gather it around the paintbrush, put your dot of glue, put it right up next to that next one because you want to get them in there nice and tight and just put it in place. And carefully twist your paintbrush and pull it out and let it dry just like that so I'm gonna fill that whole bottom look how cute that is and then we're gonna trim them a little bit too we might we might trim them a little shorter so I'm gonna fill that in I may even put some on the bottom here and then I'll show you what it looks like oh is that cute or what look at that adorable love it love the feathers love the little jewels the glitter she's so super cute so I'm gonna let that dry the glue is still wet but I stuck in all my little pieces I'm gonna let that dry I might trim back some of the little longer pieces but it's pretty pretty cute just the way it is so now my two dolls are ready now it's time to work on the background. This background piece comes in the paper doll kit and I love it it's so cute because of course it looks like a little burlesque stage but it is too small to use on my pages for my um, in my Rangers Delusions journal it's too small so what I think I'm going to do is just copy what it is and sketch that on in pencil be pretty easy to simulate this by making a swoop in the middle here and then the, another swoop comes out there that crosses over a swoop down the side and then that goes into that and I'm just going to lightly sketch it out because I can just paint this with acrylic paint and make it look just like this. A swoop there, the little ends of the curtains, a swoop and the curtains and then I'll use a ruler to make the stage and I think I'm not going to put the green in the back. I'm just going to do the blue and then the light coming down. I love that. So I'm going to just copy that in acrylic paint and paint it on my background. For the blue in the center, it's lighter and then goes out to darker. So the easiest way to do that would be with applying your paint with a baby wipe. It's kind of how I've done a lot of my art journal backgrounds in other videos. So that will be really easy. I'm just going to put some blue paint and spread it around. I'm going to go up to these images that I've drawn and not be too precise about them because um, I'm going to use paint pen over them. So that'll just make that lighter section in the middle, lighter blue. Try to go a little bit round and then put a little darker blue 
on the outer sides. And spread it around. And I'm not worrying about it too much, not being too precise because there's going to be the dolls in front of it and I'm going to do words on the page. But this will just create a nice little bluish background. So that'll be great. That'll be perfect for a basic background. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the red parts. And I'm going to use Posca pens in a red wine and red, just dark red. And then I'm going to try and do it as best I can based on this picture. So wherever the brighter red is, I'll use the red and the other parts I'll use the dark red. So I'm just going to take my Posca and start coloring in and creating these curtains. You can use your fingers to blend them. Like that. See? So I'm going to just go along and use this as my guide and create the curtains in the background. So here's how the curtains turned out using two colors of Posca pens. And now I'm going to use a gold Posca pen to make that cute trim pattern go along and make a row and then make the little the little fringe on the curtains. So here's what I came up for the background. I've got a curtain with the gold trim and the stage and the lights shining down on it and here's what the dolls are going to look like on the page. How super cute is that? It's adorable. I love it so much. So what I'm going to do is put them into place because I still want to add some words to this art journal page. So I'm going to glue down the back of their heads so that this part can still move freely. And I'm going to glue down their elbows and then you'll still be able to lift up the dress and look at the petticoats and move the bottom half. So just the elbows and the back of the heads on each one of the dolls and I'm going to glue them into place. And then I'm going to do my words on the page. So here's my final completed page. I put the words, don't ever let anyone tell you you can't. You can can. Isn't that the funniest? And you can flip it up and see their little bows and bloomers underneath. So cute. I love it. So this was a fun project. I really enjoyed these paper dolls a lot. I'll leave the link in the description box below to the Etsy store where you can purchase the kits for the paper doll set. It comes with three different Can Can Girls and the background and a discount code 20 sparkle if you put that in at the time you check out you'll get a discount on your set and the set is really reasonable to begin with so this is a super fun one to add to an art journal or to make them to hang up i hope this gave you some new fun ideas about using tissue for making a fun little lacy edge using um, tissue paper and a needle and thread and black spray to make this black this um, beautiful black paper embellishment to do some roses with some silk ribbon, put some beads on, add some sparkle, add some feathers, and just be creative and have fun with it. This was a fun art journal page. So thank you so much for the collaboration. I hope you guys had fun and you go make art because art soothes the heart. Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs.